the new scholarship, Secure and Private AI. How will this work? There's a new program we have for people and companies that care about privacy and security in the AI space. It's actually quite interesting. When you do machine learning, you get all this data in, and there's always a chance that your data gets compromised somehow. And there's now new methods that can train a machine to learn without even understanding the raw data. It sounds magical, but it adds massive amounts of security to any machine learning approach. So it's interesting that you're announcing this in partnership with Facebook. Facebook is backing 5,000 Yes, yeah, 5,000 scholarships. And Facebook is notoriously not focused on privacy, but this is part <laughs> of their new mission. Yeah, exactly. Why I mean, Facebook? I mean, we work with Facebook, we work with Google, with Amazon, mm -hmm. with pretty much anybody in this field. And privacy is a universal concern. It doesn't mean we always get it right here in Silicon Valley, but everybody, everybody cares. And how would you describe the pool of talent who can, you know, focus on, who, who have the expertise on privacy and security related issues? Mm -hmm. I mean, is, is there just not enough people to satisfy demand? There is almost nobody right now. It's a very new topic. You might think it's really old, but with the level of cyber attacks going up every, mm. every week, every month by state actors and so on, the sophistication of the defenses have to go up as well. And very few companies are good at this. Mm. What we do at Udacity, we train people. We train people with the latest skills. This is a, an Oxford PhD student built it with us and DeepMind, Google's company, funded by, eventually by Facebook scholarships. But we really build the latest and best so that any person on the planet can now become a privacy expert. So when you say there's almost nobody right now, like, could we be worried about our privacy and how well we're being protected yeah. at this moment by and the current generation of technologists? And we're learning about it every single day. We're learning about programs that Google and others do and together with governments and so on. I think this is something as, as technology progresses, there's always uh, a good user and a bad user, and we have to defend ourselves against bad users and learn how to really focus on the good users. So you announced this at Facebook's Mobile Developers yeah. Conference, F8. Um, and it obviously works well with Mark Zuckerberg's new strategy going forward to be more privacy focused. He made a joke yesterday that fell a little flat. Let's take a listen to that. Now look, I, I get that a lot of people aren't sure that we're serious about this. <laughs> I know that we don't exactly have the, the strongest reputation on privacy right now to put it lightly. So there was a slightly awkward pause there <laughs> because, well, that's an understatement. Um, do you think this strategy can really get Facebook back on track or improve its reputation? I do believe in Silicon Valley at large and not single any company, mm -hmm. we need to take these issues super seriously. And it starts with training. It starts with technology training, with people getting the right mm -hmm. skills to bring this to the workforce. I would say, being a technologist myself, it's been amazing what happened in the last 10 years. We have the genie out of the bottle. All of a sudden, we do something and we reach a billion people. What is lacking is the, the responsible, ethical, and technical training mm -hmm. that makes this all secure. Is it just the technical expertise that's missing, or is it also the values? Because it almost seems like values haven't caught up with what people now want. Uh, I think that we have to have a very broad discussion across the entire nation what we want and what we stand for as Americans and as me as a, as a wannabe and, and now actual American, as a, as a pesky immigrant, as, I, <laughs> as you say. And we have to really have a dialogue that goes all the way to Washington and everybody to see what is right for us. Um, and that dialogue is now beginning. Uh, I see Udacity actually playing a big role in this because we teach people. We have now 75,000 graduates. We have over 10 million students. We teach people all across the nation. And we can bring those values to anybody in the tech field. So give us an update on, on the latest at Udacity. How many nano degrees have you um, awarded? Yeah. And you know, what are, tell us about all of the disciplines. I know there's been some restructuring and reorganization. and. You're in a new phase. We, we love it. We've awarded something like 86,000 or so, none of degrees, 75,000 graduates. Most of them find jobs in places like Google and Facebook, but also at t many, many companies. And what I'm most excited about is, I think we're now beginning to really invent a, a new degree. Mm -hmm. um, the nano degree is becoming what we call the fourth degree. It's like an, an industry accepted credential from top companies as a way to recruit and certify people who want to be lifelong learners, who don't want to be done with learning after college, but want to continue brushing up their tech skills. And that to me is great because it means we can really transform the entire American workforce into one where people continue to learn, get these new skills, get new job opportunities, make more money, and, and have a better life.
Now, you wear a lot of hats. You're also the CEO of Kitty Hawk, your uh, self-flying car company, <laughs> or just flying car company. Give us the latest on where Kitty Hawk is today. Emily, Where's I that flying I love, car? I when think, can I ride I it? think you were the first person ever driving the Zoo, uh, first journalist ever driving the Google self-driving car many years ago. Yes, I remember this. You. And it looked like a crazy idea. <laughs> the same way the flying car looks crazy. Um, we've done in the order of 22,000 test flights. We built over 100 of those. And we're still in the development phase. It's, it's, it's not safe enough yet to really unleashed to the people, but we have this vision. We believe we can get you from downtown San Francisco to Berkeley in three minutes, or so, from San Francisco to Palo Alto in 15. So how does your vision incorporate what's already out there? You know, of course, we've got ride sharing, you've got Uber working on flying taxis. There are many different theories about what the roads and the skies are going to look like. What's yours? So my, my I've, I've worked on self-driving cars for a long time. I started the Waymo team, obviously. Yes. So okay. I have a so long you're, history. You're the, you, you're the inventor and of the self-driving uh, car. <laughs> Literally, we always have to get all of your <laughs> no, 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 no. Sorry. into every interview. <laughs> no, that's not what I'm <laughs> saying. Is, but for a long time, I, I really believed that the self-driving car would be the, the panacea, the, the thing that solves all traffic problems, because we, we kill uh, 1.2 million people um, every year in, in traffic accidents mm -hmm. in the world. And then I realized, um, together with my, my, my partner Larry Page, if you just go like three, four hundred feet up, there's almost nothing to hit. Mm -hmm. There's no kids running around, no bicycles, mm -hmm. no curbs, no, no whatever you, you care about doesn't exist. And while there's a new problem now how to manage traffic up there, mm -hmm. you can now build systems that are so quiet you won't even notice them. Mm -hmm. So for me, if, I, if I'm a futurist, a visionary, I believe it's inevitable at some point that we will daily, in a daily commute, go up in the air. And when that happens, it'll be the end of traffic. When? When does that happen? <laughs> That's the $10,000 question. Not today. And I hope we're going to have something on the market in the next like three, four years. So you mentioned Larry Page. Obviously, you went on to found Google X. Google still working on self-driving cars. So is Uber. So is, is, is Tesla. Who owns this market? Will it, will it always be uh, many different players? Do you think one or two will pull ahead? That's a great question, and, and, and the market is still very open. I mean, people always believe Waymo has kind of won, but, but we have to remind ourselves, none of the companies have rolled up a big business. In fact, the most successful today is Tesla. Tesla actually has rolled out a real autopilot, which has self-driving car features. Um, I believe on the ground, um, there'll be one or two companies that will own the market. And the reason is, uh, the same logic by which uh, ride sharing is owned by two companies in the States, not by 50, you get this network effect. Um, the more cars you operate, the shorter it is for you to get one, and the better the user experience. So, so there's a natural, um, just like Facebook has a network effect among your friends, an initial network effect among self-driving cars. So which two companies? <laughs> if I were to invest today, I would definitely invest in Waymo. And the second one, I would think for a long time. OK, not Tesla, necessarily. Uh, I think, look. Boy, I'm not an analyst. <laughs> um, I am impressed by what Tesla has been doing, and I use a Tesla every day, and I love the autopilot feature. But I think it's a long shot from an autopilot all the way to city driving without a driver inside. And that's where I believe Waymo right now has a leading edge. Okay. So, I ha last question I have to ask you because Google and Wing just got yeah. FAA approval for drones to deliver consumer goods. Yeah. An airline now. Right, right. Who would have thought that a search engine company becomes an airline? Who, who would have thought? I mean, is this the beginning of something big? Will, will the flyer or, or have some sort of role in delivery? So first, anybody caring about this, we have a course on this in Udacity. But okay. leaving this aside, you know. <laughs> um, I think the insight that, 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 that Jeff and, and, and Larry and, and, and Google and, and Amazon had is, is actually very correct, which is at some point, it will be better to, to transport things through the air. And the reason it's faster, it is, it'll be safer and it'll be less energy or more energy efficient than the ground. Um, the difference between that, what Google Wing is doing and, 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 and Jeff Bezos, Amazon, and us at Kitty Hawk is we, our package is a person. Mm -hmm. So I, I care more about me getting about the environment fast than I care about my Amazon package. Mm -hmm. And the nice thing about people is we have all the same form factor. Like we all have roughly the same size, roughly the same mm -hmm. weight. So we fit into the same box. Makes it much easier to design an aircraft for me than for Amazon packages. Interesting, that's a very interesting point.